I am in Costa Rica right now and I decided this was the perfect time to dust off my backpacking backpack and take a trip to Nicaragua. I get so many questions asking how I travel alone safely, especially as a woman. So this is going to be the first video of many explaining how to travel solo. I'm lucky enough to have a local friend coming to pick me up right now to take me to the border of Nicaragua. So let the adventure begin. Hey! Oh, there's an expo. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Another, another stripe on the tiger. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we just hopped in the car and we're officially on our way to Nicaragua. It's so rare to sit with someone who's actually from the country that you're going to uh, when you're on the way there. So I'm going to be picking my friend Jose's brain about all of the best things to do as well as any advice he has uh, for staying safe while traveling in the country. A lot of people still consider Nicaragua a really unsafe country and they have the wrong, the wrong image. Like in any other country, stay away from these little towns or neighborhoods that looks like like dangerous. Don't walk at night alone, like passing midnight, for example. And don't leave your belongings unattended on the beach. And there was there was some fighting happening in Nicaragua last year. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, How did that affect the the tourism? But, uh, of course, the tourism was affected by the by the the conflict, and uh, it dropped down. Now it's recovering. Also the economy, but. In the other hand, if you see the positive side of that for tourists, everything is cheaper now than a year ago. So just travel smart, like just like anywhere else. Like anywhere basically. else, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no words to describe the beauty of that country. It's my country. I'm so excited. We are almost there. So I am officially on my own now, walking across the border. Already being a being catcalled a little bit by these truck drivers, but it's broad daylight, so it's pretty harmless. Almost there. Before getting into a taxi, always negotiate the exact price. And also, if possible, choose to put your luggage in the back seat with you rather than in the trunk. Oh, that's okay, I'll just put it here. Thank you. Do this just in case you need to get out of the car quickly and your luggage will always be accessible. So after two very frustrating hours at immigration, I finally just hopped in the back of a taxi. It's gonna be about $25 to head to the city uh, as opposed to only a few dollars to take the bus. But because I wasn't expecting a two hour delay to be interrogated at the border about my passport stamps, I decided it would be worth it to hop in a taxi because I haven't eaten anything today and I'm very much eager to get there. But uh, one thing I highly, highly recommend is that no matter what border you're going to, make sure to have a printed copy of your exit ticket and your hotel reservation. If you don't have a local SIM card, always make sure to download offline Google Maps for the region. You can route yourself to the destination and double check that the taxi driver is taking you to the right place. Gracias! Yes. <laughs> So now I have arrived at the city center in San Juan del Sur and I am going to find a cafe that has internet to find the best hostel. I usually always book a hotel reservation before I get to where I'm going, but for the sake of this video, I want to break down a simple way to find cheap and safe accommodation. There is a whole mess of different hotel websites to choose from. I'm not going to go deep into that during this video, so just choose one of them, plug in your destination, the dates, and search. 
The first thing I do is select the price range. Then I dive into reading the reviews. I scan for red flags that are relevant for solo female travelers, and if there are no crazy bad comments, then it's safe to say that it's a reliable location to sleep. So finally, it's time to go check in. Well, it certainly took a lot longer to get here than I was anticipating, which is exactly why I like to plan my transit days when I'm getting from one place to another uh, to be doing all of that traveling uh, during the daytime. So I opted for a private room because I'm traveling with a lot of camera gear, but I love staying in dorms. It's such a cool way to connect with other travelers, a lot of solo travelers, uh, stay in hostel dorms, and it's also just incredibly affordable. Uh, the last thing I do when I check into a new hotel or hostel is that I connect to the Wi-Fi if I don't have a local SIM, and I shoot a message to one of my parents or my boyfriend or friend, uh, updating them on approximately where I'm located. This is a habit that I've developed as kind of a safety blanket so that I know in the back of my mind if something does go wrong, there's at least one other person on the planet that knows where I am and can come looking for me if I don't check in again. But now that I've gotten all settled in this new place, let's go explore the city. I don't know how much is necessary, but uh, he has one house and uh, but, um, na ja, it could be interesting. It's, it's a question, uh, what, how, how much would it be for, I don't know. How so a few minutes ago, I was sitting in a park across the street and two older men approached me. They had seen my camera and were asking how much I would charge to come to their house and take photos. So obviously, using common sense, uh, a lot of red flags come up. My advice when you get in a situation like this is don't overreact. Remember that you are an independent person. You have no moral obligation to speak to anyone or do anything uh, that you don't want to do. You listen to what they say and then cut the conversation tell them you're not interested or you're busy, and then you leave the environment that you were in. 90% of the times that I get in a slightly uncomfortable situation, just making up an excuse and walking away gets rid of it relatively quickly. The most important part of solo travel is learning how to have fun with yourself and discovering how to be alone but not feel lonely. Thank you to B&H for providing me with an amazing camera setup. You can see what gear I'm using in the description below. As you guys can see, it is starting to get dark out, which means it's the end of my adventures for today. Uh, one of the most important rules I have as a female traveler is that I just don't adventure at night. It's uh, not the most fun rule, but it has kept me safe in every single country in the world. I hope you found some of this information helpful. If so, please click the subscribe button. This is the first of very many videos about female travel as well as solo travel. So I will catch you next week.